Hi, I'm Pamela Lone Man, and I'm an English teacher in the Developmental Studies Department for Lone Star College at Kingwood. Today's lesson in the Learning Lab is Fused Sentences and Comma Splices. Let's review the independent clause. An independent clause has a noun or pronoun acting as the subject. It has a verb acting as the predicate, and it makes a complete statement. The dependent clause has a noun or pronoun, but neither of them acts as the subject. It has a verb, but it does not act as a predicate. It begins with a dependent word and does not make a complete statement. Here's a handful of dependent words that signal the beginning of a dependent clause. As, after, although, because, before, even though, if, since, though, until, when, whenever, whether, while. Which one is called a sentence? An independent clause? or a dependent clause? It would be the independent clause. Let's talk about run-on sentences. A run-on sentence is a sentence that contains two improperly joined sentences, two independent clauses that have been connected together but not in the proper fashion. There are two types of run-on sentences. We have fused sentences and comma splices. A fused sentence occurs when two sentences are joined without any punctuation. For example, some students think they can study for an important exam by cramming all night. They are probably wrong. We can mark these sentences and see where the two separate sentences have been incorrectly connected. Our first sentence is some students think they can study for an important exam by cramming all night. We should end the sentence there or properly connect it to the next independent clause. The second sentence is they are probably wrong but you can see these two sentences are not separated with any kind of appropriate punctuation. Fix number one. Simply form two separate sentences by adding a period and a capital letter. For example, some students think they can study for an important exam by cramming all night. Period. Capital T. They are probably wrong. So now we've separated that fused sentence into two properly written sentences. Same sentence. Fix number two. Since the sentences are related, simply add a semicolon between the two sentences. Some students think they can study for an important exam by cramming all night. Semicolon. They are probably wrong. The semicolon is very appropriate to use when separating two independent clauses when they're written and look like a single sentence, but you want to separate them when the two sentences are closely related to each other. Same sentence again. A third way to fix it. Connect the two sentences with a semicolon and a transi transition word plus a comma. Transition words are words like also, furthermore, however, therefore, in which case our sentence would now look like this. Some students think they can study for an important exam by cramming all night. Semicolon. However, comma, they are probably wrong. Once again, our same sentence, fix number four. You can use a comma 
in one of the words we call fanboys. Some students think they can study for an important exam by cramming all night, comma, but they are probably wrong. You probably learned in high school that fanboys stands for the words for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. Same sentence, fix number five. Flip it. Change the first independent clause into a dependent clause. You can do this by adding a dependent word to the first clause, which makes it a dependent clause, and adding a comma. For example, I've added even though in front of some students to turn the sentence into even though some students think they can study for an important exam by cramming all night, comma, they are probably wrong. The first part of the sentence now cannot stand alone. It's a dependent clause connected to the independent clause. They are probably wrong with a comma. Same sentence yet again, fix number six. You can change the second independent clause to a de dependent clause too. Add a dependent word to the second clause making it a dependent clause, but no comma this time. For example, some students think they can study for an important exam by cramming all night, though they are probably wrong. Note that there's not a comma in front of the word though. When the dependent clause follows the independent clause, the comma is not necessary. Okay, now let's talk about comma splices. Here's an example of an incorrect sentence that's a comma splice. The teacher told the students to complete the section on comma splices, comma. She told them to compose a five-page essay. You can fix the incorrect comma splice by using one of the six methods for correcting run-on sentences. Fix number one. The teacher told the students to complete the section on comma splices, comma. She told them to compose a five-page essay. Let's separate it into two complete sentences by adding a period and capitalizing the second part of that sentence and making it its own independent clause. The teacher told the students to complete the section on comma splices. She told them to compose a five-page essay. If we apply fix number two, we can just add a semicolon between the two clauses. We still have two complete sentences. They're closely related to each other. Therefore, a semicolon is completely appropriate. Fix number three. We add the semicolon with a transition word or phrase, in this case the words in addition, and then put a comma after in addition, and the sentence is now corrected. Okay, same sentence. Fix number four. The teacher told the students to complete the section on comma splices. She told them to compose a five-page essay. We add a comma, one of the fanboys, in this case the word and, and have now completed the sentence. Same example, fix number five. This time we turn the first part of the sentence into a dependent clause by adding the word after. After the teacher told the students to complete the section on comma splices, comma, she told them to compose a five-page essay. We need the comma to separate the dependent clause from the independent clause because the independent clause comes at the end of the sentence. Same example, fix number six. Instead of having the dependent clause at the beginning of the sentence, this time we've turned the second part of the sentence into the dependent clause. Therefore, the comma is not necessary. The teacher told the students to complete the section on comma splices after she told them to compose a five-page essay. 
Six ways to correct run-on sentences. Number one, add a period and a capital letter. Number two, use a semicolon if the two are related independent clauses, not if they're totally different ideas. Three, use a semicolon plus a transition word plus a comma if they are related independent clauses. Four, use a comma and one of the fanboys. Five, add a dependent word to the beginning of the first independent clause, which makes it a dependent clause, Add a comma before you add the independent clause. Or you can add a dependent clause to the second independent clause, making it a dependent clause, no comma. That one's kind of confusing. What you're doing is adding a dependent word to the beginning of the second independent clause, turning it into a dependent clause. And remember, when it comes at the end, you don't need the comma. If you learn these rules, you'll avoid run-on sentences. Are the following comma splices or fused sentences, and how could we fix them? The first example says, plastic surgery costs are decreasing, the amount of people having it is increasing. Apply one of the six rules for fixing comma splices or fused sentences and see if you can correctly fix that sentence. My cat, Bella, loves to eat salmon, baby, on the other hand, does not. Now think about it. In this case, it sounds like the salmon is baby, which makes no sense whatsoever. The two sentences are, my cat, Bella, loves to eat salmon. Baby, on the other hand, does not. So we could add a period after the word salmon, or we could apply one of the other comma rules. Bruce Campbell is one of my favorite actors. His best film is Evil Dead. A semicolon would work well in this one. Bruce Campbell is one of my favorite actors. Semicolon. His best film is Evil Dead. The two sentences have to do with each other, so a semicolon would work real well. The air quality today is poor. We should all stay inside. We could keep the comma, add a fanboy to it. We could end the sentence after poor. We could add a semicolon and a transition word. For example, the air quality today is poor, semicolon. Therefore, comma, we should all stay inside. Comic Con is one of the best events ever, unfortunately. It is also one of the most crowded. See if you can find a way to separate the sentence or correct them so that they make better sense. Okay, thank you.